Hey, welcome to another week of really awesome interviews in It's Your Time, turning the midlife crisis into your midlife awakening. I'm here with my co-host, Lotus, and we're gonna be telling you what's going on this week. And the first thing that you're gonna notice is that it looks like I'm drinking a glass of wine, and I'm not. I'm actually having a glass of kombucha. Now, if you're initiated into the kombucha world, maybe you know the name of one of our guests this week. It's Hannah Crum. Hannah has written a book called The Big Book of Kombucha. Now, anytime an author says the big book of anything, I don't know about you, but I get a little skeptical, like, no, really, could it be that complete? Trust me, the woman knows more about kombucha than anybody on the planet. So we talk about kombucha, but we also talked about some other things. And among the other things that we talked about are, Hannah is a midlife woman herself, and we talked about her passions and the things that make her excited and why it is she changed her life from what it was to being the kombucha queen, let me tell you. She knows so much about kombucha. I, they make soap out of kombucha, and I had to buy some of it. It was just so amazing. This stuff, just the smell of it is making my mouth water. So tune in for Hannah's interview. You're absolutely going to love it. Okay. Over here, we've got Josep Soler. Josep is from Barcelona, Spain. And the reason I have a gift here next to Josep's book is that Josep views things that happen to us, even bad things, as gifts. Now, that sounds a little bit odd, but one of the things that he talks about is pain in the body. And he said that pain in the body can sometimes be a signal for us that we need to make changes and that things are wrong and need our attention. And if you think about it, it really makes sense. Think about, for example, the things that we say, somebody's a pain in the neck or a pain in the you know what, or I'm sick to my stomach, or you're making me sick. All of those kinds of things are signals to ourselves about from our bodies about what's going on in our lives. Let me read to you something really quick uh, uh, from Yosep's book that I find really to be insightful. He talks about uh, think when we lose things. So it's not just about body, body pain or body uh, signals. For instance, there is no accident or coincidence in losing a wedding ring. Things that disappear and reappear have symbolic meaning for the person who is losing and not finding them. There is a gentle call within that that occurrence. The key to discovering the reason for this call is in that the object symbol in what the object symbolizes to you. In losing a wedding ring, for instance, there is a lot more than just the monetary value of the ring at play. There is much more symbolic in the in, value in the ring to consider. For one person, it might be related to the original commitment that the ring represents. For another, it might be an uncomfortable ring. For another, it can mean infidelity. He really is deep and he's really profound and he's really interesting and he's a great accent, so you're gonna wanna hear the interview because he's fun to listen to. Okay, over here we've got um, returning to us on Mother's Day is um, Meadow Lynn. She is bringing along her mother, Denise Lynn, and they together have written a book called The Mystic Cookbook. They're also fascinating in their own right. Denise Lynn, some of you may know, she's into uh, feng shui and decluttering and how things work in the environment. Um, uh, Meadow is a chef, and so the two of them combine and they talk about a lot of things like how awesome the salsa that, that I made from their recipe book is, and including our little taste expert. See what I'm saying? This is, you've got to tune in for this. The salsa is so good that my cat Lotus even likes it. This was a great interview. Tune in. They're um, airing on Mother's Day, and you're really going to enjoy the energy and the dynamicness of the two of them. I just about lost time. And then finally, We've got Lisa Copeland. Lisa is an expert in dating, not just dating in general, but dating for specifically women over 50. And she's fascinating. She's got a great take on things. And I marked just the table of contents. I just wanted to read to you really quickly what is in chapter one, or she calls it step one. Why dating after 50 feels so scary. I better look a little closer. I'm over 50. <laughs> Leaving your baggage in the past. Will men want to date me at my age? Are you ready to date? Lighting, I can't read this, sorry. It's really good. <laughs> the last one, what fun, a dating makeover. Anyway, she's fascinating, she's wonderful. The next time I read next week, I'm gonna have my readers on. So tune in, you're gonna love all this and you, trust me, you've gotta be there. Let me know what you think.